Bendy and the Ink Machine Chapter 2 is coming out? You betcha! Hey your prodigies, Pro Charles here, and in this video I'll be sharing with you an analysis of the Bendy and the Ink Machine Chapter 2 trailer. We will be covering four main things that you can see in the trailer that might have an impact on the game, so make sure that you watch all the way through to keep up with what's happening. If you would like more cool horror game videos, remember to subscribe and tap that bell, as on top of the many videos I've already made, there will be more to come. And just before we begin, if you think that this video is too long for you, remember to tap Add To and select Watch Later to save your progress, or just do it for fun. Ready? Let's begin. In one part of the trailer, the camera zooms in on a room with two desks which look like they may have been used for writing music due to this, but they may have also been light tables, which were popular tools to help animate with cells in the older days. That's besides the point though. If you pause at just the right moment and focus on the right, you'll be able to see a bendy themed can of bacon. The label on this can is a bit hard to read, but I think it says one of two things. Either it's a bunch of lines followed by label, bacon love, or it says black label bacon love. Let me know what you think. As a strange little bonus point, I think the Meatly, who is the creator of the game, either had bacon on their mind or was making a reference to this in their tweet about bacon while working on chapter two. The tweet reads, very tired, must finish chapter two. Do I smell bacon? Where is it? Talking slow can get kind of annoying. The interesting thing about this tweet is that it might be more than just a reference. The Meatly says that talking slow can get kind of annoying. Is this a hint towards the Meatly voice acting in the next chapter as a slow talking character? On to the next point. If you pause the trailer around the 8 to 9 second mark, you will be able to see what looks like a table, something on the table, and a human silhouette? Is this a hint that we might be able to see who performed the autopsy on Boris the Wolf? Will we finally come into contact with Joey Drew or some other character? We might also find out what that character has been doing with these cartoons brought to life, or are they in the process of bringing them to life? There is definitely plenty of ink around for them to play around with. The next point, and probably one of the most prominent of them all, is the music theme all around the studio that we pan through. Throughout the studio, we can see things like a recording booth, orchestra room, and perhaps a room where music is written, with some tasty bacon on the side. This may hint to more than just exploring a musical part of the studio. It might also hint towards how the next chapter will play out. The Meatly has already revealed to us that there will be more of a fleshed out experience while playing the game, such as being able to run and more puzzles to try out. The music theme that we see so strongly in the trailer might suggest that we will need to rely more on our ears in order to get through the challenges ahead. I would actually be very excited if we had some kind of stealth mechanic to play around with or music puzzles to solve. Kind of like the piano in Detention. Going back to our point on voice acting, it would be awesome if we were able to hear more voices, and given that one of the new voices might be slow and slurred out, it would be cool if it were the voice of an enemy character. And here's a bonus point that I noticed when I was observing the sound. If you listen to the track carefully as the camera pans over the voice actor studio, and as it pans over the orchestra room, you can hear a voice saying something. What it's saying is really hard to tell. I definitely don't know what it's trying to say when it's panning over the voice actor studio, but when it pans over the orchestra room, it almost sounds like the voice is saying, Bendy. I've even tried playing the sound backwards and making it as loud as possible, but I've had no luck. Give it a listen for yourself. And final point is the one that I think is the most exciting. Right at the beginning of the trailer, we can see a cutout of Bendy sitting in front of an interesting symbol. Any fan of Full Metal Alchemist would know that the symbol is a transmutation circle, which means that this glyph could actually be the way Joey Drew, or whatever character is responsible for these things, is bringing the cartoons to life. Whether you want to look at it from a classical perspective or from the perspective of the world of Full Metal Alchemist, in order to make something, you must give up something in return. Full Metal Alchemist refers to this as equivalent exchange, and it's honestly quite similar in real-life chemistry. So what's being given up here? Let's take a look. We have a bendy cutout, 
This is probably there to give Bendy form. We also have two bowls offering materials to help jumpstart and sustain Bendy's life. It's hard to tell what exactly is in those bowls, but it might be a source of carbon, and I can't tell what those white things are. Heck, maybe they used bacon. There are also two candles present, which are used in magical applications to signify intent. In this case, white candles may be candles of peace, but white is also associated with death in some cases. It's safe to assume that the white candles might represent peace, considering that the creator would have wanted Bendy to be peaceful. Hopefully. The final material we have is the ink flowing through the pipe in the top right. We have already established in our theories that ink is probably a vital component in bringing any of the cartoons to life. This is all well and good, but what about the symbol? This is probably going to get a little bit mind-blowing, so try your best to keep up. If we look closely, the symbol appears to be a decagram, a ten-pointed shape, composed of two differently sized pentagrams, one laid over the other. The decagram is contained within the alchemic circle that we can see, and the two pentagrams that make up the decagram are also contained within circles within the main circle, although these two circles are of different sizes. A decagram is known as a symbol of summoning in some magical practices, and in alchemic practices it has religious roots to the Kabbalan tree of life. Just so you know, Kabbalah is known as a mystic Jewish practice. The tree of life is a symbol of creation between earth and the divine, which I assume means heaven or the afterlife. There are also other interpretations of the decagram, the most notable of which is the balance between a pentagram, which symbolizes peace believe it or not, and the inverted pentagram, which symbolizes everything you would probably associate any pentagram with. Together, as a decagram, it symbolizes equilibrium in life. Think of it as a yin-yang symbol. The fact that the pentagrams reach out to different circles probably means that they are utilizing different states of energy and different materials. But because they are contained within a larger alchemic circle, the reaction that would take place would be contained to a single area. The other markings that we see there, such as the circles and the arcs, are probably there to maintain the reaction and ensure that it doesn't go haywire. And that has been Alchemy 101. Just kidding. This alchemy stuff was a practice from ancient times that has been well replaced by science nowadays. Anyway, what do you think of the Bendy Chapter 2 trailer? Remember to subscribe and tap that bell for more cool and interesting horror game videos. And prodigies, I really hope that these videos help you to expand on how you think so it can help you with how you go about your thinking in your daily lives. See ya!